Uh, good evening. Let's start with some exercise. Okay. Oh. Let's do some kicking. Stretching, kicking. Yeah, kind of stretch looking, kicking. Leg exercise, waist. Okay. Alright. Let's do it. Ah. Ah. Ah, let me just split. <sighs> All right, let's go down. Oh, that's good. Ah. 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 Okay, that's good. Should be good enough. Ah, it's been only three minutes. We'll take five minutes, please. Ha <laughs> Okay.
Can be done. <clears throat> okay. Uh, yeah, it's kind of pretty outside, so let me just keep it open like the. Uh, Open the carton, keep the carton open like this. Okay. Uh, yeah, happy Wednesday, everybody. Um, uh, okay. All right. Uh, something got into this wine. Is it bubble? I don't know what that is. Yeah, wine, red wine is uh, staining, so you should be very careful. Okay. <coughs> So yesterday, well, happy Wednesday, everybody. And uh, yesterday we introduced we uh, we didn't quite fully develop this. Um, well, some thoughts, some theories about Mr. Jesus Christ. Okay, we didn't quite fully develop because yeah, it was late at night and I got drunk and uh, but so today we'll it was introduction yesterday. Okay, so. Let's de fully develop this theory. Okay, so, uh, Mr. Jesus. Okay, we admire Mr. Jesus and we learn a lot from him. And I personally believe he's son of God. Okay, so, uh, but we should be, in a sense, bigger and better than Jesus. Okay, if there's some incompletion, imperfection in his teachings, we have to correct it. Okay. Uh, in that way, I'm not exactly a Christian. I'm kind of half Christian, half secular. Okay, so um, Jesus himself said, Yeah, one day you will achieve greater things than what I did. That's what Jesus said, right? He wants us to be bigger and better than him. Why? Because he's like parents. Okay, he cares about us. Okay, so yeah. Uh, so, what point? Do you want to criticize about Jesus? Um, doomsday prophecy. Doomsday prophecy. Okay, so. Well, it's like this. Jesus perhaps was too impatient. Alright? Perhaps Jesus was impatient. So he just wanted to teach what he was assigned to teach from God and just get out of here and go back to where he came from, heaven, paradise. But, well, we are not him, we are not son of God, <laughs> we are not deity, we didn't come from heaven, we didn't exist, at least in human knowledge, yeah, we don't really subscribe to pre-life, right? Let me have some thumbs, please. Uh. Uh. <laughs> this whiskey, my esophagus going down. It's like <coughs> in that nightmare, <laughs> nightmare on Elm Street. <laughs> Love that movie. Kruger, right? Yeah, this whiskey going down my esophagus, my throat is like Kee! the nightmare on Elm Street, right? Yeah, Kruger. Oh. So, uh, during Jesus' time, okay, Jesus as a human being, he uh, he looked at the world and it wasn't quite changing. Jesus can be thought as a revolutionary. He wanted to change the world into a better place 
And that's why um, some government officials felt threatened because the establishments, people in, who, are, who are in power, they don't want any big changes. They're state of, they want status quo. Why? Because they're already up there. They're high class, well fed, with luxury. So they don't want any change because they're happy as it is now, status quo, the establishments, the high class people. Huh? So they kind of felt threatened by Jesus because Jesus wanted to change the world. Something like communism, a little bit, communist revolution, something like that, okay, so. So Jesus looked at the world, and he saw the world not quite changing. So, then what? Doomsday prophecy. Jesus thought the world was going to end. <laughs> so did his disciples. The end is near. Book of Revelation. That's what they thought, including Mr. Jesus. He thought the world would go, was going to end. Uh, doomsday prophecy. Okay, but unlike he predicted, world did not end. Not once for two thousand years. Okay. So when you read Bible, we recommend you to uh, take it grain of salt, with grain of salt. Okay. Yes, because there's some inaccuracy there, all right, so, in Bible, yes. Even it is something what Jesus said, okay. Even something that Jesus said, okay, there's some inaccuracies. So, so we, we do not want that because we are well learned in history, so yeah, there are good times, bad times, good times, best times, okay? This uh, moral cycle, metaphysical cycle, just like economic cycle, it, it's like day and night, day and night, it's eternal recurrence concept in Buddhism, okay? Circle, like in physics, uh, as astronomy, yeah, Earth revolving around the sun, Earth spinning itself, day and night, four seasons, Okay, so there are era where it's more liberal in American history. Yeah, left, right, left, right, liberal president, liberal Congress. Next, next ten years, Republican, conservative Congress, conservative presidents. Right? Yeah, it, that's just how it is. Okay, so pro Trumpers. MAGA mobs or President Trump himself, they were like kind of like doomsday prophecy. Okay, it's like now or never attitude. Okay, why? Because they thought four years presidency of President Joe Biden will be like the end of the world, intolerable. <clears throat> like American value destroyed for four years of under President Joe Biden, America will be destroyed. <clears throat> kind of doomsday prophecy, kind of, right? And in humanology, we reject that. Why? Because we know, yeah, dual dualism, minor processism, pluminosism, okay, going up and down, dual dualism, it is eternal recurrence. Because, uh, yeah, nowadays, it's metaphysically at the very down, low point, NATO, at the rock bottom. When the society hit the rock bottom, morally, ethically, it, it will start to go up, back up. Okay, that's just how it is. Why? Because people want changes. People get fed up with all this immorality, unethicality, or ugliness. People don't want that anymore. So they will start... Getting back to beauty, ethics, morality, okay. After that, people get we get fed up with all the beauty, ethics, morality, and ignorance. I mean, knowledge, true knowledge, truth. When they are fed up with that, yeah, they start to go down. They will crave for falsehood, bad ideologies, ugliness, 
immorality, unethicality, because that's different from what was beautiful, what's right, what's correct, what's true. That's how people are. They want changes. That's why uh, there's this metaphysical up and down, sinusoidal rhythm throughout the human history. That's just how it is. Okay. But Mr. Jesus thought the world is going to end because it was very unethical, immoral period of time. And he came to save the world. They didn't listen. So he thought, okay, then the world is going to end. That was his doomsday prophecy. Mr. Jesus and his disciples, like St. John, for one, okay? But they were wrong. Well, did not end. Not once. For 2,000 years. Okay. Now, pro Trumpers. They thought America is going to go down under President Joe Biden four years. Well, it might. We don't know. But if you look at the history, we can only make projections about the future based on human history in the past, because we don't know, we cannot see the future, but we can look in the past, history books, okay? Yeah, American history going up and down, up and down. This is just one of those days, next four years. After that, it will start to go up. What we gotta do is just wait and tolerate for four years. Perhaps stay low a little bit and survive, persevere. Because next next four years or next next eight years, whatever, okay? Yeah, good time will come. So we, we just need to slow down, do diet exercise, drink alcohol, smoke cigarette, and just take it easy and survive. Right? Actually, Book of Revelation talk about that kind of patience too. Book of Revelation say, yeah, there will be some bad time, like the beast, 666, horrible trial, time of tribulation, and, but in the book of Revelation, they say, yeah, but those who survive, who don't give up into temptation of devil, but they persevere, then, yeah, heaven and kingdom come, Jesus Advent, Adventism, he will come, second coming of Jesus, and we, we will be saved. Book of Revelation will talk, also talk about that, okay? So, Bible, Book of Revelation, Doomsday Prophecy, there's some good in there. It's not 100% bad, okay? And we want to take some balanced approach when we read Bible. That's what we are saying, okay? So, people who went to BLM riot or Capitol Hill riot, BLM being Democratic Party, uh, Capitol Hill riot, just like MAGA MAP, the Republican Party, right? Uh, I think they are a little bit suicidal, okay? Perhaps not physically, but metaphysically, like in terms of their career, reputation. It's like they are a little bit suicidal in terms of their career, reputation, okay? And in their physical lives too, because many people did die in BLM protesting, Capitol Hill protesting, okay. Uh, so why are all they so suicidal? Because it was dangerous. BLM riot, Capitol Hill riot, New General Six, they were very dangerous places, okay. Then, but they did it anyway, why? I think they were just bored. COVID-19 lockdown, shutdown, okay. Our recommendation, yeah, learn to have, learn how to have fun when they are alone. Yeah, martial arts, dancing, mathematics, foreign languages, exercise, diet, maybe some drinking at home, smoking cigarettes. Because they have fun, right? Yeah. Because we don't want to depend on other people for our happiness, okay? People's perception, our popularity, our fame, 
Yeah, I mean, it, it's fun every once in a while, but we don't want to totally depend on other people, their perception of us for our happiness. We want to be independent when it comes to happiness. Okay? But we don't always have other people liking me, I mean, liking us, right? Yeah, we don't always have that. And people who are famous, sometimes they commit suicide, sometimes they are drug overdose, which is kind of like suicide, okay? Even though they are famous, look at Marilyn Monroe, Michael Jackson, Elvis Presley, why? Fame is fun at the beginning, right? When they become famous, but after a while, they get fed up. They want something new. And they have money, power, fame. So how do they have fun? Because Money, power, fame, once you have it for a while, it gets bored. It doesn't excite you anymore. Why? Yeah, it's copium channel. It's channel resistance wearing out. Okay? The energy copium is no longer no spent in this channel. Money, power, fame. Because the, you're used to it. In copium energy, we say the resistance is worn out. There's no more, no more res resistance. Okay? No more excitement there. So copium is not spent, and the copium that's not spent, it becomes boredom, okay? Pain or boredom, so, so that's, that's why they want new sensation and they start using stronger and stronger drugs and they die. Or they meet opposite gender, marry, divorce, marry, divorce, or date, break up, date, break up, all these different people, and they end up with STD, sexually transmitted diseases, sometimes AIDS or herpes, gonorrhea, whatever, okay, syphilis, yeah, they end up getting AIDS, okay, that's like a Charlie Sheen or a Jim Carrey, okay, I like both of them, they're great comedians, okay, but they were too promiscuous. Okay, so they got asked to this. I'm just saying public knowledge, okay? With their celebrities. Everybody knows, okay? Publicly open up some facts, okay? We take five minutes break, okay? Five minutes. Okay. Uh,
So the pro Trumpers in Capitol Hill, the error they made was this. Okay, I mean they could exercise some patience and tolerance. Yeah, next four years. Well, how about forgetting about politics for the next four years, right? Or just deal with it. It does all. I'm a conservative. It does all know me. When President Joe Biden shutting down oil, gas, fossil fuel production, okay, because that's very unwise, and there will be repercussions, negative, okay. Let him learn by experience then. Why? Because it, once it starts to affect negatively the American economy, he will reverse that and go back to where it was, production of oil and gas. Okay. Let, let them learn by trial and error, okay. Let them learn the hard lesson, the hard way. Let them. How about LGBT? Let them, let, let them learn by lesson. Yeah, life lesson. Let, let, let them just learn through experience. Let them try it out. <laughs> we know it's gonna fail, and but they don't listen. Okay, so let them because they don't believe, they don't accept our theory about this anti gayism Okay, so then let them learn by their experience. Let them try on an error, learn by trial and error, and let them do it. No problem. Of course, we'll say later, we'll say, well, we told you so, okay, but, but they want, sometimes, I, I was kind of like that, okay, when I was a teenager, sometimes I didn't, I would not listen to my parents, not LGBT thing, no, not, not that, but my parents, my teachers, they would give me advice, but I had to learn it by my own experience. So I tried it and failed, and later realized my parents, my teachers were right all along. But I questioned them, because they're only humans, because they could be wrong, okay? I had to learn it sometimes by experience, by trial and error of myself. So we understand that. Eh? Yeah, you do. We're humanologists. Nobody understands people more than we do, okay? Like mathematics, for example, okay? This is theorem, right? When I was in high school, I didn't just accept this theorem. I had to prove it. Huh? As opposed to just memorizing this formula, I wanted to prove, my, prove it myself. And some of my mathematics teachers like that attitude of mine, okay? So mathematical independence, right? Yeah. So this paper, the law of anti gayism yeah, uh, we understand the publishers rejecting that paper because they are running business. And pro gayism is one of the most dominant ideology today in t year 2021. And they don't want to lose any business, publishing companies or advertisers. They don't want any boycott on their company just because they published my paper online. There could be boycott and complaints. They don't have time to deal with any of that stuff. So yeah, they cancelled my paper basically. But I, but I'm okay with that. Okay, I understand. They're business people. Okay. So it has nothing to do with their, with their ideological subscription. It has to do with money concern. They need to feed their people, their employees as publishers. They need to feed their own family members, pay the mortgage, pay their employees. It's money. It's more physical than metaphysical concern. Okay? It has nothing to do with their ideological subscription. Maybe a little bit, but mostly it's about survival, economic, financial, business survival. So we understand that. Okay, so so yeah, no protest whatsoever. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. But, so Palo, yeah, we kind of need that, okay? We conservatives, we need some outlet like that. I'm very, we are very sorry that it was misused by uh, pro-Trumpers to plan and communicate for this January 6th violence. We are sorry, okay? But Palo, yeah, we need we conservatives because most of us are peaceful people, all right? Not every single conservative went there January 6, 2021. Okay. I didn't. First of all, I don't have time or money to go, go there. Okay. But we do need some outlet where we can talk about things and share some ideas. Okay. So this law of anti gayism, which is hyper duper conservative. Okay. Yeah, other publishers, they cannot accept this in this era, day and age, where pro gayism is the, still the king. Okay, uh, so if it's going to be published, it will have to be some conservative websites like uh, Palo. All right. I don't know if they accept any PDF. They're like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or Social media, right? I don't know. I tried to create an account in Palo. They, they came back up, right? <laughs> this week. And I read some news articles that, yeah, they're still struggling technically. So it will take some weeks until they can accept brand new users. Okay. And I, I'm, I'm, I plan to subscribe to it. Okay. And hopefully they accept PDF. I don't know. If not, well, I'll just wait until political climate changes. Political climate change, okay. I'll just wait, okay, this law anti gayism because it's 172 pages. It's a, there's a lot of things there. It's not all about anti gayism, okay. There's some other stuff in there too, okay. Good stuff. You have some substance content, but you can wait, okay. Why? Because I don't expect me, my life would end in four years. I doubt it. Okay. Of course, I don't know. All right. But most likely, yeah, I'll live more than four years. So if next president would become, would be some Republican Party person, uh, other than President Trump. President Trump, yeah, he, I don't think he has any chance of winning again. Okay, I doubt it. All right. But, yeah, in 2024, yeah, I'm going to run for president again. Okay, yeah. Next year, 2022, yeah, I, I run for United States Senate in Alaska. Yeah. yeah. Who knows, right? Yeah, no one knows. And uh, but Paolo, yeah, I I I plan on subscribing that like uh, when the website is back up. Okay, so then I try to find a way to publish this low ventilation there. Okay, whether they will let me do it or not, that I don't know. Never used it, Paolo. Okay, so but we kind of need that. Okay. The kind of outlet, conservative outlet. Yeah, we need that. Yeah. yeah. So this end of the world, doomsday prophecy, yeah, there's some negative side to it, the dark side, okay, because it is not true at all. Right? When bad time comes, when it's the worst time, it's time later on, you will start to go back up. Okay, we know this because, yeah, dual dualism, okay. Manipulacism, pluminacism, okay. 
it, it's just the way it has been. And probably that's how it will always be, okay? Like day and night, okay? I mean, even mamas and papas, they said, sang. The darkest hour is just before dawn. Maybe I sing that song <laughs> to five minutes, okay? Mamas and Papas, what's, what's the title of that song? Oh, this is the for this is for the one that I love. Okay. Let me sing that song, okay? After five minutes, okay? Karaoke Wednesday. <laughs> Okay. Nice.
<clears throat> so today after work, uh, I didn't write the human rights paper, but I wrote a oh, letter to editor instead. Yeah, I didn't plan on it. I'll tell you after I refill this coconut vodka, okay? Yeah, I didn't plan on writing letter to editor, of course, I don't know whether it's going to get published or not in local newspaper, okay, I, that I don't know, that's off my control, but I was inspired by my fellow locals, writers, journalists, all right, yeah, I think it's my moral, ethical duty to do some community service by writing to local newspaper, call to local radio stations, you know, talk, political talk show, okay? And I did, both of them, yeah. I did call to local radio talk show, political talk show, and wrote to local newspaper, okay? Yeah, declaring my candidacy plan next year okay yeah i did i didn't plan on it okay but but yeah community service is important yeah the humanized paper that's more like international audience aimed toward international or at least national audience okay and it is it's being received pretty well okay it is all the five papers and one book collection of those five papers that we did last year is it's being read okay so not many of course just 10 20 30 40 people in the world yeah which, which is to me a very satisfactory okay it's not like 1 million viewers in youtube it's not like that but because it's more academic okay Voice being read, so I was satisfied to see that. Okay. Yeah. But that's more global or national, bigger audience pool. But as an Alaskan, yeah, I should do something about community service, right? Yeah, I think that's very important. Okay. For example, let's say you are big time CEO, chief executive officer of international corporation. Okay. Yeah, you're dealing with the world. Let's say you are CEO of McDonald's or Amazon or IBM, whatever, okay? But when you come home, you need to spend time with your family and your friends too. This is very local, right? Yeah. It's the right thing to do. Okay, so.
so I ended up writing, okay, because I was inspired by my fellow Alaskans contributing to their community, okay, yeah. I should do my part too, as an Alaskan. Some, something contributive to Alaskan locals, okay. Yeah. In the community I belong, physically belong, okay. Yeah, 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 they, they do deserve some of my time like that, okay, so. So, yeah. I was kind of hesitant of writing this article because, yes, I in this article, I don't know if whether it's going to get published or not, but I did accuse uh, President Trump of criminal charge of at least involuntary manslaughter. Okay, why? <laughs> because as a lawyer, I know that's just what it is. Okay, what it did. Close to reckless, okay, so January 6th. Yeah. And I did not want to upset my towners, locals, who might read that paper that I submitted to local newspaper, okay. Give me one second, give me one second. Yes. <coughs> I, I have like 10 different pairs of gla eyeglasses and depending on the glasses, eyeglasses, it hits different point on my north nose ridge. So I changed my glasses, okay, so, so that to give breaks from different parts of my nose ridge surface, okay. Anyways. Yeah, but I said, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry, my fellow Republicans in Alaska, but let's say what needs to be said for future generations' sake, their education, because we want our future generation, our descendants to be bigger and better than us. Okay, so for their education, yeah, let's give it some legal analysis of uh, Mr. Former President Trump's wrongdoing. Okay. Yeah, I was hesitant to write about it, but I don't know whether it gets, it's going to get published or not in local newspaper, where really it's up to them. It's off my hand, off my control, but I wrote it. I did my part. Okay. And, uh, because all are re in Alaska, there are a lot of Republicans, okay? Alaska is more Republican state than Democratic state, okay? So, and a lot of Alaskans still side with former President Trump, okay? So, uh, I, I, I did not want to offend them, their sentiment. So, but, so I was very gentle <laughs> in writing the sentences. I was very, very conscious of their feelings, okay. Because I know how to do that. Why? How? Politics, you learn how to be diplomatic, how to express, express your opinion without offending people too much. Yeah, smoothing out the edge. As a former candidate in Alaska State Senate, I learned that skill. People skill, communication skill, okay? So I know how to do that. I learned it from other politicians, political activists. Yeah, express controversial ideas, but do it nicely, be respectful, do it gently, then you're fine. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, communication skill, being diplomatic, tactful, okay, yeah. 
I was trained in that department for the past three years or two years since I got involved in politics. Okay, so yeah, by all means, get involved in politics if you want to. Okay, you learn a lot of great deals. Okay, I became a better person since I got involved in politics. Okay, you learn how to communicate with people, how to listen to them, how to tolerate, and how to express your ideas in a very <sighs> gentle way. It took me a while to learn that, okay, but I did learn, okay, so, because I have many mentors, right, in politics, in life, they're like my metaphysical parents, okay, my former bosses, former colleagues, okay, yeah, some of them I still keep in touch, touch with on a regular basis, okay, so, Yeah. I mean, Alaskans, they're fantastic people, okay? They, they're real cool people, so... I think they will tolerate this controversial article if it gets published. That I don't know, okay? Whether it gets published or not. But if it does get published, I bet Alaskans, they can tolerate me, okay? Yeah, I have this degree of trust with my comrades, right? Yeah. yeah. So that's that, okay? So, what else? Mathematics? Yeah, we can do some mathematics. Maybe that's after five minutes, okay? So. Tomorrow, yeah, most likely I'm going to write about this general operator theory, okay, so. Yeah, we can talk about that. Or something else. <laughs> okay. Because I got, I received some feedbacks from my dear friends, okay. They don't like this mathematics very much, okay. My friends will tell me, and give me some very helpful, constructive, positive feedbacks and some criticism too, okay, of this Google YouTube Human Art series, okay? Yeah, God bless them and God bless you, thank you, okay? And I do listen, okay? And uh, uh, several of them told me they didn't quite enjoy mathematics part. Okay. <laughs> My excuse, I'm like, oh, I'm Asian. I'm like Asian nerd. So, Asian male. American. So, mathematics is kind of like, you know, Asian American thing kicking all this thing as an Asian American, so that's what it was. <laughs> oh yeah, I gotta sing this song, right? Mamas and Papas. Uh this is dedicated for so yeah. For the one I love, okay. I think that's the title. We take five minutes break, okay? I forgot, okay, and then uh, I'll sing you this song, okay. <laughs> Mathematics, maybe later, okay, yeah. We don't have to do it, right? <laughs> okay.
Oh, yeah. yeah, so welcome to Humanology, okay? We don't, we are not scripted, we don't have fixed agenda, we are like anything goes, right? Sometimes we do martial arts, weight training, push-ups. 
we do like whatever, okay? Sometimes we do all of a sudden mathematics, humanology, politics, anything goes, okay? We're just relaxed. Okay? We're a creative individual, laid back. No fixed agenda, right? Yeah. No prescripted, spontaneous kind of improv, improvisation, impromptu. Yeah. So let me sing you this song, okay? Mamas and Papas, right? I think they played harp. I don't think it was acoustic guitar. I think it was a harp. Okay. Goes like this. Dun 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 While I'm far away from you, my baby. I know it's hard for you, my baby. Because it's hard for my for me, my baby. And the darkest hour is just before before dawn. Each night before you go to bed, my baby, whisper a little prayer for my baby, and tell all stars above. This is dedicated to one the one I love. Life can never be. Exactly like we wanted to be, I could be satisfied knowing you love me. There's one thing I want you to do, especially for me. It's something that everybody needs. It goes like a beautiful song, Mamas and Papas, 1970s. Well, let me skip some middle part, okay? Stars above. It's time before you go to bed, my baby, before and tell all stars above. This is dedicated to one I love. This is this is dedicated to one I love. This is dedicated to one I love. This is dedicated to one I love. This is dedicated. Beautiful song. I love this song. Huge fan. Yeah. So yeah, the darkest the darkest hour is just before the dawn, alright? Night and day, night and day, okay. Same thing, okay. So yeah, when when is darkest hour morally, ethically, okay. Yeah, good time will come, alright? It, it's just how it always has been. We experience that every single day in our respective lives, right? Yeah, we go to work, come back home. Go to work, <laughs> come back home, okay? It, that's how it is, okay? We have some challenging times at work. We earn our right to freedom at home. That's why we go to work. Then we come home. We enjoy relaxing time, okay? Well, the... Lost in Translation movie. Uh, the Saturday Night Live alumnus, alumnus. What's his name? Yeah, Ghost Poster guy. Lost in Translation, okay. The Francis Coppola's daughter directed that movie. Got Academy Award. Academy Award. I mean, the actress. Some. I don't remember her name, okay. Oh, the actual name I remember, okay, Bill Murray. Serena, not like Ghost Post guy. Uh, the female actress, uh, Scarlett Johansson, right? Yeah, they did a fantastic job, okay. Yeah, the daughter of Francis Coppola, I don't remember her name, first name, but she did fantastic job too, okay. Filmed in Japan, right? Yeah. Why I will talk about this movie? Uh, I lost the trend of my thoughts. I'm drunk. Yeah. I don't remember. What's the connection between mamas and papas? 
this dedicate to the one I love. The darkest hour is just before dawn. And then movie lost in translation. What's the connection? I lost the trend trend of my thought, okay. Lost in translation. I don't recall, okay. Maybe some line that would be line. It was a nice movie. I have DVD of that movie. Lost in Translation. Yeah, Mr. Bill Murray and Mr. I mean Miss Scarlett Johansson. I'm kind of flooded with <laughs> present part of <Obama. laughs> I read the news. All right. Whatever. What's the connection? And they're both married. Scarlett Johansson. I mean, in that movie. Lost in translation. Yes, spoiler alert. Okay, so Bill Murray already also married to okay. Spoiler alert. Okay, yeah, they made it in a bar, right? Elevator, whatever. Okay, so no hanky panky, no adultery. Some friendship, right? Because Bill Murray is old enough, was old enough in the movie to be father of Scarlett. Johansson, okay. <laughs> Whatever. It was a nice movie. Expat, expatriates. <laughs> I don't remember the connection between this song, Mama's and Papa's dedicated for the one I love, and this movie, Lost in Translation, okay. I'm lost in my memory. Yeah, I'm drinking, I'm kind of drunk, as you can see, okay. Yeah, let's snap out of it, okay, so what else? Um. What time is it? <laughs> Seven o'clock. Yeah, night is still young, right? How about I tell you about this interesting experience? Story time, okay. Uh, Ann Arbor, Michigan. I was confused with Madison, Wisconsin and Ann Arbor, Michigan. They, they, they come next to each other, Michigan and Wisconsin, Midwest, American Midwest, okay. I went to undergrad in Madison, Wisconsin. I went to law school in Ann Arbor, Michigan. So, yeah, the great towns, Ann Arbor, Madison, Wisconsin, Ann Arbor, Michigan. And in Ann Arbor, Michigan, yeah, I went to law school. And law school, there was this springtime, like in May. Maybe April, maybe March. This law school prom night. Yeah, they rented some nice conference room in a hotel. And yeah, law school dance night, prom night. They dress up, right? In Arab Michigan, okay. Yeah. I went to high school in Seoul, South Korea, so there's no such a thing as prom night. Not in Seoul, South Korea. When I was there in 1990s, okay. 
But when I was in graduate school in Ithaca, New York, PhD, Korea, two years, yeah, we had graduate students prom night. When I was in Ann Arbor, Michigan, law school, they had prom night, law school, students prom night. We, we dress up nicely, right? Some renting some space, conference room in a hotel, dress up and sing and dance, kind of. Maybe I'll tell you about that, okay? Hey, I'm single guy, no hanky-panky, okay? And then, um, I just love to dance. And no hanky-panky, okay? But I did dance, okay? Prom night, I did dress up. But no hanky-panky, okay? So, no prom security, no, not like that. But I did dress up myself accordingly, okay? Yeah. Graduate student prom night in Ithaca, New York, Cornell University. Law school prom night in Ann Arbor, Michigan, okay? Yeah. In Madison, Wisconsin, uh, I was undergrad. I've been to some house parties, been to some dance clubs. That was that, okay? So. Yeah. Some public dancing experience. Yeah, let's talk about that, okay? I, please give me five minutes, okay? So I need some vocal rest. All right, so. Yeah, we can talk about that. Yeah, okay. Uh. All right.
Okay. So yeah, this uh what that prom story, okay, in Seoul, South Korea when I was there, nineteen eighties, nineteen nineties, there's no such a thing as prom night, that's more American tradition, which is fantastic, okay. There are a lot of movies about that, right? Yeah. So as a when I was grow, growing up, so South Korea, as a child, as a teenager, okay, we just watched Prom Night concept in American movies, but we, we didn't have that stuff <laughs> back in 1980s, 1990s. I don't know about today, okay? I don't. All right. It's all about studying, okay, so Korean education, which is very disciplinary, Spartan type, okay. So, yeah, we only heard this concept, what's this concept of this prom night, American tradition, which is fantastic, okay. So, yeah. So, when I went, came back to America, because I was born in Ithaca, New York, okay, but I grew up as a child, teenager in Seoul, South Korea. Which is fantastic. Discipline and education, okay. And some good time too, okay. <laughs> that story later, okay. But in America, okay, Madison, Wisconsin, yeah, seven years, because my English was not that good, okay. So I spent seven years to have my Bachelor's of Science degree in Computer Science, okay. It was not easy, okay. But I got it done. Seven years, as opposed to four years. I was in and out of school. My English was not that good enough to take classes, okay? It took me seven years to finish undergrad, Bachelor of Science degree in Computer Science and Medicine Council, okay? Then I went to straight to PhD career in Cornell University in Ithaca, New York. Yeah. Some graduate prom night. Yeah, oh, that's great. Yeah, we are not high school students. We are graduate students, like mid-twenties. What year age was I? Uh, what year was that? It was like 2004. I was in Cornell between 2004 and 2006. Two years, okay. So I was like 28, 26 and 28. How about that, okay. I had a date. A lady, kind and generous lady. Uh, who were at least twice my age, okay? But she was fantastic dancer, okay? So, and she looked very young and fit. Okay, that's what I can tell you, okay? So, she was more than twice my age, okay? I was like 27, so you were like 2005. Yeah, I was like 27. She was twice older than my age. In her 50s. Okay. And yeah, but so what? <laughs> yeah, we dated for two or three months. Okay. So I had a date. So yeah, Ithaca, New York, Kona University. I belong to computer science, PhD. Okay. But graduate students, it's all departments, like you have physics, political science, mathematics, English literature, whatever. Ithaca New York, Kona University, graduate students, like master's degree, PhD degree, okay. Yeah, they have prom night, okay. So I bought two tickets, okay. And one ticket for me, one ticket for my girlfriend, ex-girlfriend, who, who was, uh, twice older than me in her 50s okay but she was a fantastic dancer she told me some partnership dancing great lady okay we dated for like two two months three months something like that okay so yeah i was not alone 
in this graduate student's prom night back in like uh, 2005, 16 years ago. Okay, I was not wrong. I had my date. She was <laughs> twice my age. About okay, she was in her fifties. I was in my twenties. But so what? She was in great shape. Fantastic lady, kind and generous lady. Okay, we dated like two three months. Okay, so so that was Cornell. Okay, later on, yeah, after Cornell, yeah, I dropped out. I dropped out. I couldn't take this PhD. It was too much. Okay, then I came to Los Angeles, California. Okay, then I joined the U.S. Army, and after that, yeah, I went to law school. In Ann Arbor, Michigan. Okay. So in Ann Arbor, Michigan, law school, I was, it was year, uh, 2013 to 2015. Okay. So I was like 2013 minus 1978. How old was I? 35, right? Yeah, I was 35. I was born in 1978. I went to law school 2013. When I was like 35. Okay. T at least 10 years older than my colleagues, okay? I'm kind of late bloomer type, right? Yeah. In Korean world, yeah, tong back goat. Okay, yes, it's like winter. The kind of plant that blossom in the winter, late bloomer, okay. Tong back goat, okay, so. Late bloomer, okay. Plant biology, botany, okay. So in Ann Arbor, Michigan, yeah, it's like 2013, so I was like 35, right? At least 10 years older than my colleagues, okay? So I went to law school prom, prom night, by myself, okay? Yeah. I think it was on Friday or Saturday, okay? I think it was on Friday, okay, so. Yeah, we had classes, law school classes, this is Ann Arbor, Michigan. Okay, let's say it was 2013. Okay, I was 35 years old. Yeah, I took classes on Friday. Okay, I came back home and I took a nap. But before then, a couple of weeks before that, I ordered two packages from Amazon.com white head with long rim and this black. Masquerade this uh, handheld with this glasses with this stick 90 degrees. Okay, yeah, like in the Mozart Amadeus movie. Okay, they have that. Okay, in Amazon.com, Masquerade handheld stick. You have this covering of this eyes. Right, 90 degrees, perpendicular, right, orthogonal. <laughs> and he has this nice feather, and it was colored in black. Okay, stick, eye covering, and then feather, black. That was one part. And white hat with long rim. But you come, they are different, okay? So, my plan was, okay, yeah, this handheld mask, masquerade purpose, okay? It has long feather, black feather, okay? My plan was, take out this feather and sew it, sew it in with needle and thread into this white hat, long rimmed, okay? 
And now you have white hat with long rim, sewed into with this black feather, okay? Black and white, okay? So, yeah, sharp contrast of color, black and white, okay? Very pure colors, black, very pure color, white, very pure color, okay? And I did order that separately, two packages, but I overslept. It was the prom night, okay? So, United States Postal of Postal Service, USPS, in Arrow, Michigan, okay? I was like there one day, one minute late. Just one minute late before they closed at 5 o'clock p.m. Friday night, prom night. I was like, hey, officer, hey, I'm sorry, I took a nap. I'm a law school student, Arrow, Michigan. My apartment is in Michigan, Michigan, okay? I, mean, I was just one, one minute late, but I have this very important package. I got my hat, white, long little hat. But this black feather, this mask, okay, the, that package is still in there in my inbox, okay, in this USPS box, package. Would you let me in? That's a no. Okay, so. After after some persuasion, yeah, I got it, and I got back to my apartment in Eastern Michigan. Okay, so did in. Okay, I went to prom night. Okay, it was a sensation. Okay, no hanky panky, but we danced. They love this hat. White head with long rim, with black feather. I do this disassemble, reassemble. So with this, <laughs> not not pencil and paper, but yeah, needle, thread. Okay, it happened. Okay, it was nice. All right. But there are some other stories, okay. <laughs> Give me five minutes, okay. And I'll tell you the rest of the story. Back in the days, 2013, Arrow of Michigan, America, when I was like 35 years, 37 years old, okay. 2013, seven, eight years ago, okay. So I'll tell you the rest of the story, okay. Beautiful story, all right. I'll tell you, okay? I'm way too drunk. I'm way drunk, okay, yeah, but I sober up, okay, so uh, I'm Asian. I know how to behave when I'm drunk, okay, so. All right. Oh. Give me five minutes, okay? All right.
Okay, so. Yeah, back to this story, right? Yeah, so it was like 2013, 14, okay? When I was in Arab Michigan. Yeah, I took a long nap after it was like Friday. I had these difficult classes. I need to take, needed to take some one or two hours of nap. Then my alarm clock went off, so I went to this post office. United States Postal Service, USPS, okay. I was like one minute late after it closed at five o'clock. From night, like six o'clock, seven o'clock, okay, so. <laughs> I needed this package, Black Feather, okay. It was very important package, okay, but they closed, okay. The postmaster in the station in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Maybe Ypsilant, Michigan, something like that, okay. So, somewhere in between, okay. So, hey, I was like, hey, mister, I'm sorry, I took a nap. I'm a law school student and we have law school prom night, okay. I have this important package, black feather, okay. On top, I, I was sew it in with this white, long rimmed head I got it but black feather very important okay so can I get in? He said no. Okay. Then I had to come up with different strategy. Okay. You know it's May 2014 okay four months ago I was right here January 2014, okay. This mail truck got stuck in the snow. It was heavy snow. Ann Arbor, Michigan, if you like Michigan, okay. Me and other people, we volunteered. We parked our cars. We grabbed our shovels. Some of them, plastic shovels, metallic shovels, okay. I was one of them, okay. Because we appreciate your service. United States Postal Service, USPS, okay. So we rescued this mail truck. I was one of them, four months ago. I don't know if anybody told you about this or not. We rescued that mail truck so that people get their mail, maybe love letters, okay. I was there. I was one of them. Four months ago, January 2014. I was one of them. And then he said, oh, 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 okay, okay, yeah, yeah, I didn't know, okay, yeah, come in, okay, get your package, okay. And I did get my package, came back to my one bedroom apartment in Ypsilanti, Michigan, which is like 20 minutes away from in our Michigan, okay. I got my package, okay. This uh, handheld masquerade mask. It has this beautiful black feather, okay. So I took it off, sewed it in. I didn't use stapler <laughs> to chip, okay. No, black feather, I took it out and this white long rimmed hat, sewed it in with my needle and thread, it took me about um, maybe 20 minutes, okay. Yeah, white head, black feather, sharp contrast. And I went to the prom night, and it was sensational. They loved that hat. I don't have that hat with me, why? They took it from me, I, and I let them. Two different packages, Amazon.com, I think. Okay. Yeah, white hat with long rim and black feather with this handheld masquerade like Amadeus, Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. Yeah, it is perpendicular, okay, you have this eye cover, handheld, perpendicular, 90 degrees, okay. And this black 
beautiful black feather, okay. I took the black feather out of that handheld mask, mask and then sewed it into this white head with long rim. Okay, I made it in time, went to the prom night. I did dance, okay. Because this white head with black feather on top was so beautiful, they took it. I didn't climb it, okay, yeah, it's so beautiful, it's all yours, people, okay. <laughs> they would circulate around this head, white head with black feather, circulate all around, okay, I don't know where it is. Yeah, it's so beautiful, great property, it belongs to a people, take it, okay. I'm not promoting ultra internationalism here. No. We want white to be white, black to be black, okay? Brown to be brown. You know about me if you are here. Okay. We don't advocate for ultra, ultra internationalism, okay? But that hat, white hat with black feather, very beautiful, distinct, okay? So they loved it, okay? They wanted it, wanted it, and I give it to gave it to that. Okay, yeah, I didn't claim it. Okay, so yeah, go ahead and take it. Okay, the soccer, the dance floor in low school prom night back in two thousand fourteen. No, I think it was two thousand sixteen. Okay, something like that. Okay, yeah. So I still don't have it, but I took some pictures. Okay, it's in some Google. Cloud storage, okay. If I ever die, yeah, cloud storage, Gmail, Yahoo, whatever, okay. It's all public knowledge, okay. Go ahead and publish it, okay. All my pictures, essays, public knowledge, okay. I'm okay with that, right? Just don't publish other people's email address, alright? So. It redacted, okay. So. If I die, when I die, after I die, yeah, go ahead, publish all that stuff. Google, Gmail, Yahoo Mail, what I wrote, my pictures, is public knowledge, okay? I give you permission, all right? But what other people wrote, their email addresses, no, okay? All right, you got it? Okay. Okay, thank you. Have a nice day. Happy Saturday. Last Saturday. Happy Wednesday. Okay. So. Okay. Thank you. God bless you for generations to come. Be good. Be well. Survive and thrive. Thank you. Bye. Survive and thrive. Thank you. Bye.